This is Daniel, your Game Master and Master of Ceremony. This is Tori, and I play Dooley. This is Sorcerer, and I play Ty. This is Becca, and I play Mirgrat. And this is Odyssey, a Babylon 5 story. Welcome aboard. Well, hi everyone. I hear tell that you're looking for that Padini fellow. Y'all want to hear them stories that he tells about the Odyssey? That damn ship he's telling the bar about all the time. Well, today you can't. Now, we have to be quiet now. Seems him and his crew had a rap party for season one. A party that has gone on for two weeks solid. Who's touching my sides? I don't know how that Centauri does it, and you cannot believe how much booze he can throw down. Have you ever seen a Centauri get in a drinking contest with uh, a Pacmara? Well, I have now, and trust me, it's the aftermath you want to fear. Anyhow, I'm yeah, Ad Radney, part-time server it. here, and executive assistant to Mr. Fogel. Yeah. He tells me to play this data crystal while he is mm, recovering. I think this is the season finale he was talking about, oh, and yeah. you get to hear it first. Yeah, Lucky you. Uh, so why don't y'all you know, sit I, right there and uh, listen to the story of the Odyssey? All right, so if that's the plan, I'm going to start with... Julie and Ty have the manifest of the ship, which also gives the people involved. There are two games. One is known as Veicht. The other one is known as Richt. Mm -hmm. One of those two is probably one of the ones you saw, and there's two different quarters for them. And they're in the uh, alien sector, so that's, excuse me, methane breathers. So if you're Should looking for well, you still have to go get the mask on, and you're going to be in a, in a uh, unusual environment. But otherwise, it shouldn't be a giant deal, shall we say? Yeah, uh, makes sense. Yep. Um, I gotta, go ahead. I also Ty, like, I got to go make a phone call first before we do this. Not me personally, but Ty says she needs to right quick. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So for the moment, Dooley is going to be looking up where to best find these two. Uh, uh, to to uh, game, Ty's going to make a quick call, and I think I know what that's about. But I'm going to let uh, we'll get to that in a second. And then mm -hmm. Mirgrat is going to try to hack into the system to try to contact the Soul Hunters. So, so wait, I need to hack to do that. Basically, <laughs> you just can't ring them on the phone. You actually have to <laughs> access the sub basically the subspace communication array for the ship to try to basically hail them to see if they respond. Oh, fuck uh, that. I'm the diplomat and asking them to set me up with that. Okay. So. <laughs> Reasonable. I'm guessing you don't have a huge technical skill, right? Um, I mean, I have a decent, uh, yeah. modifier for computer use. Mm-hmm. But it's not, like, great, and I don't re and I don't have great modifiers for technical electronics. Well, do you, well, here's the thing. Do you want to try first before going to the ambassador? Yeah, I should, shouldn't I? Okay. I'll let you do that real quick just because I think I want to see what this happens. And then, like I said, we'll get to the, the, the dramatic in a moment. So go ahead and oh, go. So do you want use computer? Use computer. All right. 17. 17. Not great, but honestly, for dramatic purposes... I'm going to I'm going to give this to you simply because I think it's going to move the plot along more than anything else. I'll take so, it. <laughs> so there will be a price later on, but I think this is going to be fine. So we'll deal with that in a minute. Ty, I want to deal with you first. Who are you calling? Mm -hmm. I am going to call the police. Anonymous tip line. <laughs> okay. Fat, okay. You have my interest. Ty, <laughs> that is not what I thought you were going to say. Neither did I. <laughs> like, that is the last thing I expect to figure out of Ty's mouth ever. This is a, another straight-up Ty scheme. It's it's a doozy. <laughs> okay, so what is it you're calling about to the anonymous tip line? I am going to tell the anonymous tip line that there is a Minbari named 
sorry, what was his name? Milgram? That Milgram. sounds right. Yeah. Milgram in second class and that this Mimbari is involved in dealing Amber and they should go arrest them. Okay. Not bad. Not bad Thank at you. all. <laughs> so they take the information, you give them their you know anonymous tip and just enough evidence, you know, verbal you know, yeah, I saw him there, I saw him there. When this happened, yeah, you know, this happened I saw him like down in steerage and like lurking around, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. Suspicious. Very suspicious. Go ahead and, and do, they said, well, they'll, they'll follow up on it, but they'll see what they can do. They've already pulled up his records. Yes, he's religious cast. So the phrase religious cast involved in crime as a Mimbari is kind of like saying there's a no, no, Jewish no. guy <laughs> who's, who's smuggling pork. <laughs> well, you know, who's involved in the great bacon raids. You know, that's, it's a very strange statement, but they're going to look into this anyway. I mean, what, like, you can be involved in an industry without actually eating it. True, but mm-hmm. it's mostly just people don't recognize... People claiming the Mumbari are involved in crime is a very strange one because they have this reputation of being very enlightened. Some of the old, you know, part of the elder races, for lack of a better term, and they've, you know, managed to get some form of quote-unquote unity with their planet. They barely even have economics the way that most other races understand it. So to hear them talking about a Mimbari who is involved in drug smuggling is like, wait, what? It would be kind of like, again, I wrote the, the, the one, but another would be finding out the hobbits are, uh, finding out hobbits are drug kingpins who have enslaved the elves. Well, she is calling the human police, so they may or may not already, not like Mimbari. It's a good oh, bet. It's, well, they are ISA, so the person you're actually talking to is Kali, who is oh. a Narn, but she's very adamant about this sort of stuff. She's looked into it anyway. Mm. They're going to look into that, probably take him in for questioning, maybe hold him for a little bit of time so they can figure a few things out, and then mm. we'll see what happens then. But he, they thank you for your time. Okay. So. That was it. I right. go back to doing whatever it is with Dewey. Gotcha. The other scheme so, that I thought of on fly just now. <laughs> it's not a bad one. By the way, that little pad that you were given? Lights up. Ooh. Um, it basically gives you a birth and a, uh, a, a in a steerage. <laughs> mm-hmm. So there's a, basically a room number and essentially a, a, a door key that's, been, you know, electronic door key that's been sent to that pad. So. Right. You do that. So who first? Okay. Let's deal with. Ty and Dooley first. You guys find the birth. It's in the alien sector, which means you have to go down to uh, certain sec- sections and uh, go through the methane breathers section, which for the Bracari is fine. They have masks specifically for you. You have most humanoids. Boom. No problem. Um, did you ever notice that in the show you never see a Narn with one of those masks? Well, they're like old school firefighting masks, and by old school I mean the ones that I had to use when I first joined the military. So if you have like a big forehead, <laughs> good luck. Exactly. Yeah. Now they do that be- partly because again they're made for humans, and the the the, uh, the Narn have giant heads, which is again fine. But also, it they had to make the idea of Narn gill implants. Um, for this because otherwise I don't think they could have fit the mask over Jakar's head or, you know, adjusted to the facial structure enough that it looked reasonable. So they just went, ah, we'll pull it here. We'll work our way around it. Look, right out. They Done. didn't have budgets for two different types of masks. I actually, in my inventory, have a breather mask. Oh, well, there you go. So. So you stop you... by your quarters, pick it up, and yep. uh, there's these, uh, and they have the standard visitor's masks. Uh, available for the alien sectors. So, which no, of the I two... Actually, I bought one before we left B5. Yes. So, yeah. Well, no, I meant for, I meant for Ty, because Ty's going to need one, too. Oh, yeah. Ty oh, I think Ty one. has one, but I figured hers was probably more like for, like, an emergency, like, an EG, emergency space evacuation thing, like, whatever the equivalent is. Yeah. Because on, like, regular ships... 
everybody has, like, a little face mask, so if the ship catches fire, you don't die from smoke inhalation while you're trying to get out of your, like, whatever space you're in. So mm-hmm. I figured, like, there's probably some space equivalent. So, like, if you lose oxygen or something, you don't die while you're trying to evacuate to somewhere else. So I thought that was probably more like what she has versus, like, a legit breather mask like they have in the show. It's like an emergency well, thing. Well, what is it labeled on, on, on your sheet? It is the shit. It is the yeah, very last yeah. page. Uh, Here we go. It's just yeah, labeled breather mask. Yeah. So you got the same thing that they do, which is basically the fire, as you said, the firefighter helmet with the, the, the containers on the side. So it actually doesn't like filter anything that basically provides a oxygen source for a while. Okay. Okay. So both of you have specifically modified versions of that for your particular race. So you go, you pick them up, and there are two, uh, game to look for. So the first one you, you look for, uh, Rich, you actually do find this, this cabin, you ring, nothing happens. Give me a notice check on both of you guys. I got like four different PDFs open right now. None of them are like, <laughs> yeah. same. Uh, t- 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 I should just memorize this because it's the one that I always fail because it's the one that I have like no points in anyway. That's all right. One. There we go. 19 okay. though. Yeah. That's what you got 19 and Ty has I'm getting there. Yep. No worries. Nine. Okay. So do notices that the, uh, the door actually has been opened already and that it's technically unlocked. Wait, is this? I'm sorry, I lost track. Is this the door to my quarters or the door to the the first um, the first game you went to? The guy named Rich. Okay, I am going to put my hand on my knife hilt. Okay. I don't notice anything because I'm an yeah. idiot. <laughs> well, it's not just like you're he's not home. The helmet's not helping, shall we say? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I guess he is um, at home. Yeah. No, wait. The door's open. I assume I now notice this since someone yeah. pointed it out. Like, oh, um, hmm. Uh, what do you want to do about um, this? Well, I mean, the door's open, so technically we're not breaking and entering, but I think we should be prepared for whatever's in there. Are you What do you armed? have in mind? Of course I'm not armed. Why would you not be armed? Why would I be armed? <laughs> you were the criminal. I am not a criminal. You're a criminal. You're a wanted murderer. Okay, you understand the criminal mind more than all any of us. Yeah, you know what happens when an alien space pilot or whoever else comes on board a new station? They check, and they make sure you don't have any weapons. So guess what I don't have? Weapons. In your fight? <laughs> oh, that was a serious question. <laughs> yeah, she's still looking at you like, what, why are you laughing at me? <laughs> oh, okay, so what I'm do you think we should do? Pilot. Uh, well, let me see. We could walk in there, and I guess you're worried that someone's gonna attack us. And you can try to fight them off with your pocket knife. I guess. Or we could call the cops and tell them that we think someone broke into this guy's room, and they can go in and get killed instead of us. Call Aparo. We should call Aparo. He's better than the cops, because he's not the cops. Exactly. Okay. Then, I guess we call him. I'm gonna bow to your expertise of dealing with the criminal affairs. (laughs) Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. So, you call Aparo. It doesn't take long for him to show back up. Once you tell him where he is, he's not that far, and... He is more than happy to help. You know, the tried and true helper that he is. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, because, again, he's trying to be uh, the, the the sheriff of the next planet. So, but he shows up. Jimmy's the lock. Then you point out the fact that the door is, in fact, open. He, you know, pushes the door open. You actually have to push it open. It's not so much a it opens and closes on its own. You kind of have to push it open. So there's not a lot of power going through it. Mm-hmm. Inside, however, you find the game's suit. Uh, its encounter suit is uh, kind of thrown about on the floor. The helmet is on the table. Uh, the actual game itself looks like he has been 
dissect it. Okay, I try not to throw up. Gross. <laughs> this again. Because that's going to be bad in the breather mask. Yeah. Um, I... I don't know how Tyler reacted. I feel like she would not even go in. She's just kind of half in, half out. Go do (laughs) like uh, watching Aparo do things. Aparo goes over. He looks at something. He's like a smoke grenade or a a tear gas grenade in in the area. Going through the innards for something. That's yeah, you think? Do they set a spaghetti for So I don't know this. I didn't eat biology, much. but does he have all of his stomachs? Uh, I, I don't you know the game wise, biology well enough to say myself. But some, this one girl did, and I she can't say one thing got though. sick, and she's gone. scrambling at oh, her mask, fear. trying to get it off, <laughs> and, and she, she was really not get it off. off. And, and we're just seeing this mask or like just it's part of some of this, but in smaller pieces. It looks like it's missing. Rips out his knife, cuts his strap, the whole thing spews everywhere. You're going to win. <laughs> and, uh, like, they just so we just get underway to do drills, it? and we, like, got underway to do drills, and we did, like, go, like the uh, storm, but the CEO decided he still wanted to do drills, like and this. dinner that night was chili cheese dogs, going in so we're out here doing fire drills, and, like, they have to stop doing the drills, like, cancel the drills, because we don't need you anymore means that your job is to arrange your Very well, you want to email your boss. Including me. Glowing report. She was gnarly. I uh, did not enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He kind of like shots his liver again. <laughs> well, well, very well. well. Call if you no, need. No, literally, I, I have never eaten a chili cheese. I'm going to report this to the regular hot dogs. Yes, yes. chili, yes. You know that something was Together, dissected no. here. It's very important <laughs> to be dealt with. Be time. Yeah, that's a good idea. You go uh, do that. Right. So, he kind of anyway. Just yeah. uh, goes off to yeah, do Julie is trying not to be sick in her mask. I think I insulted him. Do you think he's mad at us? Well, technically, as is is the ranger, he really shouldn't be getting that. I thought they had better control than that. Mm. But me. Maybe we have maybe five minutes. Do we want to search anything? Um, I guess we could poke around a little bit. So we'll okay. we'll spend you know maybe three four minutes just doing a quick search. Okay. Uh, if you have if either of you have knowledge culture, uh, game that'd be great. Mm. But I'm assuming, no. assuming neither of you do. No. Okay. Go ahead and make a notice check, but because you guys don't know the game very well, this is going to have to be a high notice response. Oh, man. 26! Okay. Not bad. And <laughs> Okay. So, you actually find, uh, a duly actually finds a badge that indicates that this was a agent of the queen. Uh, the game, like a lot of insects, technically have a hive mind, and they have a hierarchy not unlike bees. Queens, drones, workers, that sort of thing. This one not only was it was an attaché and a possible ambassador, but it was a direct eyes and ears of the queen herself, where it was, the queen was, essentially. And it's dead now. You well, I'm not going to touch it, and I'm not going to pick it up. I'm just... You're just noticing. Just yeah. noticing. I really don't yeah. want to touch anything in here. Okay. Mm, yeah, gross. Also, so, fingerprints. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I was thinking more of the second, but yeah. <laughs> Are you going to deal with the other game on your list? I think we should. Yeah, yeah, we, we should. We don't know that this is the one that we're looking for, and we definitely can't ask him now, so... So we'll so, go ahead to the next one. You go over, and you ring the chime, and there is actually a, a chirping of come in. Here we go. Hit the panel, open the door. Door opens. The game is there in his full encounter suit. He has... Well, his entire place is not your standard uh, 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 air, uh, apartment. You saw that for the last one. This one looks different. Uh, if nothing else, he seems to have a lot more furniture that kind of looks like columns. Like columns. jointed columns. Kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Just these cylinders everywhere. I like this. look at them and I'm just like, eh, whatever. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. It's, I, I, I have no reference for this. I don't know what a normal game uh, room looks like. The other one might have been odd. We don't know. (laughs) Give me a notice check. Okay. Three for three. Hey, you never know. You could get a 20. Hopefully you do. (laughs) (laughs) Three for three. Fair enough. I'll give it to Dooley because it's high enough. I mean, it's not the usual threshold I will give it, but you know what? I'm I'm doing this for plot purposes. You're noticing the canisters and they wait. Wait, you've seen this canister twice. Once was on the shuttle. It's a canister that fell open 
which slid the out which slid the brain. Other one was a game who had delivered another similar canister to the door. Okay. And so it's in a suit. It seems to be arranging some things. How can I help you? Hello. You may remember us from the shuttle ride where we all disappeared for a second he, and he, reappeared in the wrong seats. You remember that, right? He kind of tends his fingers together. Yes, I remember. He slowly approaches you as if either trying to listen into the conversation with all the jets of methane around or otherwise, you know, trying to whatever. But yeah, slowly approaching you. Yes, I remember. I remember. He looks over. And Dooley, I remember you on Shalassan soil at a party. He looks over at Ty, running f- uh, from a shadow vessel back during the war. Yes, I remember. He then kind of goes back to what he was doing, which, again, going to this table with a bunch of cylinders. I remember. So, what are you here for? Have I ever been on Shalassan soil? Yes, remember, you were dealing with the Shalassan Embassy, which is how you, uh, when you started this whole thing about looking for Amber. You were, the, the Sh- uh, Shalassan Empire, way back. Oh, that, okay, yeah. I was like, cause I know that they, they framed me for a murder, but I didn't know if I had actually been there. Yeah, okay. Okay. like I said, once or twice, but yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, yep, you remember us, alright. Good. I remember the warrior, the hunter, the fraud, the pornographer, the actor, the pilot, the knight, all players, all archetypes. So lovely. It turns again it turns back to you. So what can I do for you? Um, you haven't taken any trips to steerage lately, not this part of steerage, but the part where like the like not where humans go, like people that don't usually breathe methane. <laughs> have you? Yes. I have. Why? Do you ever go to a door and make deliveries down there? He turns to you. Of course. I have to keep the vessels running, Dan. Don't you? Yes. You understand. Mm -hmm. And to keep the vessels running, I need assistance. And please help me. You want through the door. Don't you? Sure do. How much does it cost us? <laughs> Dooley looks a little startled, like, wow, that went direct to the point very quickly. <laughs> I mean, there's no point, like, denying it. This is, well, if you wish to carry a delivery, I can get you through the door. But you'll need to be prepped. They will scan and see if the delivery is correct. Um, he holds it. Uh, take, he grabs one of the cylinders, places it at a nearby table. So, you want in? You must be prepared. Are you ready? Prepared how? You must be prepared. Door closes behind you. Uh, I, like, back towards it, like, really slowly. Um, you know, prepared how? What do you, what, like, reading material? Like, I need a unit, I need some overalls to wear. Like, you know, what do you mean? I have a costume. <laughs> It's very simple. The game reaches up to his helmet, pops it to the left, you hear the as it hisses open, pulls off the helmet, and there's no head. It pulls the the breather mask off the chest, pulls the helmet off, puts the helmet down, the suit stands up straight, and they don't have a sanity check, but if they did, this is where Ty would have to make one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Julie, this is like well, what? probably a will saving throw. Oh yes, so I'll need a will saving throw for both of you guys as oh, a you. as a bug crawls out of the neck. Not a small one. It's the size. Uh, it looks kind of like a lobster with a hundred eyes on stalks, fairy wings, and is probably about the size of a corgi. Oh dear. Horrifying. Children and it? Sorry, what did you say, Becca? It sounds like the thing from The Five Children and It. By <laughs> oh, right. Oh, okay. dear. Dooley did not do well. <laughs> uh, hang on a sec. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Take the mask off. Put the mask back on. <laughs> oh! Gosh. Oh, dear. It's okay, it's funnier this way, I guess. <laughs> 
I was going to have trouble, like, coming up with a way for Ty to just shake off the appearance of another giant bug, so this is just easier for me. Yeah, so basically, you're going to go start doing the screaming fit. Hyperventilating, for sure. Uh, yeah. Hyperventilating in a breather mask, which is not good, but there it is. That, no. That's okay. Dooley is not doing much better in this particular situation, uh, as the thing just crawls out of the neck, and it looks over and says, We have more vessels. Good. It opens the jar, and inside the jar, in fluid, is another one of itself, which it then cracks a seal, and it starts crawling out of the vessel itself. We have such sights to show from beyond the stars we can show you. Backing up on the door, I start, like, (laughs) trying to, like, get the door to open... I pull, I pull my knife. Okay. So, uh, let's start this. Ty, you're gonna try the door. Uh, you're welcome to use your, I think that's subterfuge for lock pick? What is that? Oh, it's locked, okay. It's locked. I just figured Ty would start, like, panic slapping at the thing that opens the door, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like turning the knob and it isn't working type deal. Yeah, I believe it would be intrigue. No, no, excuse me. Yep, subterfuge. I'll go with subterfuge. If you want to see if you can try to pop the lock, it's a subterfuge check at a minus five. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. Why not? Okay. This is a thing that she could do while she's having a panic attack and being attacked by a bug. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, we'll notice that you actually did roll a one on your on your will save. An absolute you know, beautiful, oh dear yes. god. Perfect. Oh my yes. god! <laughs> it works out for me. Okay, the probability that, theory wins again. <laughs> you had 17, you had three, but you have to minus five off that, so you only got a 15. So I'm gonna roll a card, I'm gonna roll myself just in case to see on this side. Okay. So, what is Dooley doing? Dooley pulls her dagger and, or her knife, and what is she doing? Uh, she's backing up towards the door and just holding out the knife, saying, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, no, and fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> we have such sight. Your uh, pie does not, again, got a decent robot with the minus five. Come on, open up, come on, open up, come on! And here's Dooley kind of like sw- swinging the, the knife back and forth, going the first thing close to me. It's going to become, uh, uh, go on a pin board. The other containers start opening up. Uh, a couple of them, when the sheath comes off, or have more and more brains and blue goo all around it, but a couple of them have more of the bugs. As they okay. Can... Ah. <laughs> <laughs> However, I did pull a couple of cards. The door opens. Oh, and on God. the other side, Alan Gibbons. No mask, no nothing. He just opens the door, points out, uh, as in like, uh, points the, the way out, to yeah. tie. Yeah, I get the fuck out. Do you, like, get, uh, do you grab Dooley, like, or do you just... Yeah, lovely... like, I, I mean, I grab Dooley by the arm and get the fuck out. Ty is self-serving, but not that self-serving. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a quick notice check for Ty alone. 13. So you notice that while he's not wearing a mask, his uh, pendant is glowing again, and all he says is he's, you know, he basically points to you, Leave! He looks back at the, the, the bugs as you guys round the corner and he basically says, that one is ours. And you guys run out. Yes. Very fast. Mm-hmm. For a long while. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So that happened. Now let's go back to Mirgorat. Hello. <laughs> so, Mirgorat, let's talk about you Heading back to the quarters real quick, going to your panel, putting in a couple of codes. You got lucky, and you know you got lucky in this, because you're not really supposed to have hailing frequencies outside of the vessel. You're only supposed to be able to talk to people inside the vessel. But you again, using your librarian codes, using a couple informations you know, you manage to gain access to the ISA array, which would normally allow you to, again, report back home, use hyperspace links, that sort of thing. In this case, I'm however, a good hacking montage. Yeah, something like that. Except I don't know how that would look in Babylon Five, other than uh, putting in a couple of ISO rods here and there, and a couple of uh, 
uh, calm crystals, tapping a few things, and like access granted. You open up hailing frequencies to the three soul hunters behind you, and one of them actually responds and has something of a bemused look on its face. Again, soul hunters, large heads. They have the uh, like almost a third eye looking thing in their forehead. Uh, that basically is like a large pineal gland or something like that. They never actually go into detail. It's got a little bit of drape down the back of the head of a ceremonial something or other. And, but he looks down and says, yes, you, oh, a Pac Mara. He then bows and he says, greetings, preserver of life. How can we be assistance? Greetings likewise. I would contact you regarding an entity from beyond the stars. He kind of nods his head. Fascinating. One of your ilk almost never acknowledges ours, let alone hails and wishes to discuss being from beyond the stars. Very well. How can I, uh, how can we of the Brotherhood help you? Okay, so. Mirgrat's going to give them a rundown of the whole, like, situation vis-a-vis the Amber, the Messenger is the Message, the, uh, blue brain, the brain in blue liquid, and, like, the, the disappearing stomach, that sort of thing. So, basically, they're just gonna get the Soul Hunters caught up to speed on what is going on. And I'm guessing this is done in kind of a, uh, breathless, no periods used, you know, <laughs> kind of strange run-on sentence uh, that you might expect uh, uh, in a normal situation is someone trying to explain something very, very quickly in a very short amount of time. I mean, all all things being relative, that's kind of what they're trying to do. Okay. He listens, <laughs> he listens a little bit, finds, you know, nods appropriately. Okay, fine, no problem. And then once you're at the done talking about the thing from the amber, the stomach, and this and that, he kind of nods and says, this is indeed fascinating, but what does that have to do with us? You are collectors of knowledge in the way that the Pac Mara preserve, preserve our universe for, for rebirth after the great churn. You too preserve the knowledge of, of those you encounter. Perhaps you will be able to offer insight that we do not have. I see. I think I understand what you mean. Yes, we are preservers. Yes, we do collect those prized souls, those cherished souls that can be listened to and added to the chorus of knowledge. The thing you're you're, uh, speaking of is not something we have knowledge of and would be interested in understanding. That is not the reason we are drawn to you, but I will answer your questions as best I can. From what we can tell from what you described, you're referring to a either dimensional being or something that has converted itself in the way that we convert uh, souls into spheres from flesh, or in the one case that is now documented, the time that we harvested an entire planet that had gone into an evolutionary state of pure energy. We then released said uh, individuals when it was understood they were not dying, but converting. It is possible that you are dealing with something that has converted itself to memory. This is fascinating. Are you at liberty to share any notes on the soul conversion process? No, that is only for us to know. In this case, we would not want such information falling into the wrong hands. It can be used poorly. I understand. However, if you would be do us a favor and discuss with your captain, allowing us to dock so we may, may finish our, our work, we would, uh, we would greatly appreciate this. We wish no one any harm. We wish no one any suffering. We just wish to do what we need to do. I shall endeavor to make arrangements to that effect. Once you are docked, would you consent to meet with me? He, he, they nod and say, if, if this is the case, yes. But again, we must do our work first. We have our priorities. But again, while most sentients 
do not like our presence, the fact that you do, we will do our best to be quiet, polite, and as the humans say, in and out without a fuss. I am unaware of this colloquialism. However, I shall add it to my collection. Thank you. Most sentient races do not like us, and we understand. But that does not stop us from our from our from our work. And yours... I mean, yeah, Mirgarat can relate to this on a personal level. Oh yeah, and this is and in your particular case, the soul we are after is of such import that we cannot stop until we have until we have secured it. Are you at liberty to share what soul you are after? He pauses for a second. Give me a quick diplomacy check. This is gonna go well. Spoke to plus one, just like I thought. <sighs> Fourteen. Fourteen. I'm going to throw a couple cards here. All right. I'll give it to you. He nods. He says, please keep this between you and I. We would not want our acquisition being frightened. But we are after the last of their kind in this galaxy. He uh, looks left and right. Are you alone? You're in your quarters, so obviously the word is yes. Yes. Before they left for beyond the rim, with the rest of the first ones. The Vorlons were able to split parts of their consciousness and gift it to their agents to act as the eyes and ears to those when they could not be who act as their adversary. A segment their, their was gifted uh, sorry, to an individual me, wrong word. who they had did. vowed to follow the Vorlon way and the Vorlons were not able to retrieve that 1% of 1% of a Vorlon. And rather than deal with everything else, it was left to become nothing once the host had died. But that host still lives, and we wish to cherish the last smallest fragment of Vorlon in this universe. That is fascinating! I shall do my best to ensure that this is preserved in your keeping! He nods. He says, Thank you. Though I sense there is more death and more great souls on your ship, we will do our best, but we must do what we must do. He thanks you and turns off the uh, ends communication. All right. So is- now I'm going to have to call the diplomat. Okay. Um, because the only way I see the the soul hunters being allowed to board is if uh, we start throwing around some political weight. Oh, yes. In this particular case, you're going to call and, oof, uh, this one's going to be a huge diplomacy check. I know that's not your, your strong suit, and I know you've got a little weight to pull around because you're a librarian, but you're asking for a soul hunter to come on board. That is like asking for... Oh, by the way, I have this assassin friend who says he has business on this ship. Would it, um, be, would it be an influence check then? Because I feel like I yeah. feel like the Pakamara themselves probably don't have as much issue with the soul hunters as other sentient species. Because, like, we're kind of in the same line of work. Kinda. Again, I, I don't, this was not something that was delved into a lot in the show, simply because, uh, most of it was focused on the humans, the Narns, the Mambari, and the Centauri. Uh, so, we're kind of playing with gray area here, so, but yeah, if you want to do an influence check, let's do an influence check. I'm all for that. So, what sphere of influence? That would be Pakmara. Alright. So it's 2d6? That's, that's what it says here. I, I always thought that was a typo, but yeah, 2d6 plus, your influence rating. 20. Damn. You have a hell of an influence rating. All right. Yeah. Normally this would be something larger, but you guys are still only fifth level, so I'm just going to give it to you. Um, after really throwing your weight around as a librarian, because even the ambassador, not just for y'all's sake, but for the sake of the ship, is like, wait, who wants to come on board? But after... Mentioning that how this is for the library, how this is for the mission to get the stomach back, how this is going to be, you know, be everything else. Um, by the way, did you, uh, I'm going to just spill it for this one. Did you happen to notice the certain phrasing used when described the target? For last of their kind? 
Does that phrasing sound familiar in some way? Yeah, it sounds like the thing that's producing the amber. Good. So that's also probably what part of the thing you're going to use to get the ambassador to tell the captain to let them on board. Uh, yeah. So they agree. Um, and so that, they also mention they're going to alert uh, Kutbusek in this regard uh, to act again as eyes, ears, and protection. And they're, and, but they're going to let the, the soul hunters on board. Uh, the captain is rightly furious about this. Um, Let's and how things we're angry about, buddy. Because <laughs> again, they don't want a riot to happen. Yeah, uh, well, I didn't want my my comrade's stomach to go missing, but we can't have everything we want now, can we? <laughs> How's it <laughs> going out, motherfucker? <laughs> All right. Uh, so you let bring the the the. The soul hunters on board, they, they are allowed to dock three ships apiece, which brings three soul hunters who all walk in kind of unison. Not like, you know, they kind of do the V-shaped formation when they walk. I'm guessing, uh, Mirkret greets them at, at docking, yes? Oh, hell yes. Okay. I assume that part of this agreement is that, like, someone has to supervise them at all times, and y'all know Mirkret volunteered. So, all right. Now let's deal with Ty and mm-hmm. Julie. Because part of me is like, if you guys don't mind going a little bit over time, I think I can get us to the season, to the finale. We're like okay. so goddamn close. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. I have nothing better to do. It's raining and okay, nowhere to go. Um, <laughs> I just so Ty and Julie. Now that fine. you've been scared shitless by uh, uh, bugs and such, what's the plan? Run. Yeah, we're running away. From- okay, well that part I get, but so now you've run far enough away from danger, you probably made your way out of the alien sector, grab your masks off, kind of did the whole, what the hell was that? at each other. <laughs> <laughs> As you just saw, that that is not a game, that is a thing from beyond the stars again, uh, who is doing weirdness. Yeah, um, I, I pointed at, 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 uh, Ty's wrist. I'm like, call, call him back. Call him back. I'm, we, we can't deal with this. Call him back. <laughs> call who back? <laughs> the ranger guy. Paro? He's not gonna, what is he gonna do? Get a bug in his head? Do you really want me to do that to him? Well, no, we'll tell him what's happening. He'll know what to do. <laughs> Alright, sure. I, I call a Paro okay, again. Then who should I we look- call? Who should we call? We gotta call somebody. We can't just let them keep taking people's heads. Who would you suggest? Anybody who goes in there is gonna get turned into a bug except for me. With guns. Why? What do you mean except for you? I mean, that guy pointed at me, didn't he? I wasn't yes, he paying attention. Oh, well. Actually, go ahead. I'm going to give a notice that. check to, to do Lee. I, I'm going to give a notice check. If you, okay. It's going to be the minus five because you were terrified at the time. But let's right. see if, if you get a decent notice to note that the guy pointed at, at uh, Ty and said, this one is ours. Yeah. Um, 22 minus five is 17. Oh, you know what? I'm going to give it to you anyway. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of that today. <laughs> like I said, so, I... I'm doing this a lot because, again, we're so close to yeah, the finale I, I, section that I kind of feel like I have to move forward. I yeah, getting to try I, against I, some bullshit our way out of this is probably going to be a bad idea. Yeah, Today, I, I, I want to move the game forward. <laughs> yeah, I take a moment. I kind of replant my brain. I'm like, wait a minute. You're right. He said, some, he said, wait, how are you theirs? And I take a step back. <laughs> what Define oh. theirs. <laughs> I don't know what he meant. I was, we were running away from getting giant bugs to replace our heads or whatever, whatever, whatever was going to happen to us. Okay, who should we tell about this? We have to tell somebody. Preferably people with really big guns. (laughs) Are we going to do that without them wondering what the hell we're doing and why we're involved? I, we're investigating Amber for the Pacamara. Mm-hmm. And we're and? following a lead. We were following a lead. Sure. This is this is your party now. 
Uh, yeah. Fine. Call who you want. I don't know who to call. <laughs> uh, <laughs> call Aparo. If nothing else, Actually, he won't ask too many questions. Give me an intelligence check. What's your intelligence? Uh, my intelligence is 17. So that okay. plus, what am I rolling? Uh, you're rolling a die 20 and try to roll under. Nine! That'll do. <laughs> you still have the business card of the couple that made the delivery of Amber to the door. Oh. They might be able to help us. Yeah, so I call them. Again, my okay. communicator. And, or go to a ship. Okay. Thing and, and... So you call them and they, it's like, yes? Ah. You. Glad to hear from you. So how can the associates and I help you in this case? Are you looking for more drugs, or are you going to lie to us again? I kind of look Lies. at her for a moment, and I'm trying to figure out, how do I know she's not a bug? <laughs> well, they do have their heads on still, which seems like an indication. Okay, yes. Um, we we need help, and... Um, do you have guns? Yes. We do not keep firearms on the vessel. That would be against regulations. So please, what can uh, what do you want? How can I help? This is going to sound crazy, <laughs> but there are big bugs who are beheading people and taking over the bodies, and I think that might be a problem on a ship. <laughs> he looks over and he looks at a. Uh, there's a few other people in the background of you know the of the terminal you guys are looking at. They look. They kind of nod at each other quietly. So, you know, no nobody's saying anything, but they're just kind of like in a quiet conversation, back and forth. Bugs, you say. Well, those aren't supposed to be here. Very well. I guess you would like these dealt with. We will arrange for them to be dealt with as best we can. Is there anything else you want? Who are you? Who are you? We are the association. We are here to continue the great work. What great work? Evolution. What other great work is there? I think some people like to read, but, you know, evolution. <laughs> By the way, that is a good line for a show. Uh, I kind of I look over at Ty, and I'm like, uh, you have this expression that says, oh, my God, did we just make a horrible mistake? I just, like, stare at her because my entire week has been 95% horrible mistakes, so. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they're not supposed to be here? He, he just kind of raises his hand. That is none of your concern at the moment. It will be dealt with. Uh, they almost took my head. It's very much my concern. I understand. He looks around. There is a tr- old and ancient treaty that has been broken for a, for reasons that I won't go into just at the moment. But me and my associates might be able to help in this, at least to enforce the old ways. The association is very concerned with the old ways and with old Pops. Okay, so you're going to take care of this. How do we know you're going to take care of this? He just kind of smiles and says, because we always take care of this. Always. Can we meet afterwards? I have questions. Absolutely. They actually kind of look at each other for a moment. There's a tap on his shoulder. He looks back at the, the woman. They kind of silently go to each other. <laughs> he looks over. There is something else you want. We can all tell it from here. What is it? What? No, I just want to keep my head. Very I have well. no idea what you're talking about. I like kind of shove Dooley out of the way. We mm-hmm. need to, we want to get in the door. Don't pretend you don't know what door it is. We need to get in there. Oh, yeah. They nod. <laughs> ah, we thought. Meet us at the door in, he looks at his watch, one hour. We will discuss things once they're inside. Mm, how about we discuss things outside and then decide yeah. if we want to go in? As right. you wish. We will see you then. In All the meantime, right. we have laws to lay down. Goodbye. Sure, do whatever you want. We need to go back and tell Mjolgarat what we're mm-hmm. doing. Okay. That's probably a good idea. I don't really want to go missing because my yeah, life insurance requires that in order for my beneficiaries to get the money, they have to know what happened to me. Yep. Speaking yeah. of which, I do want to remind uh, Ty about the pad that lit up with your extra reward. Oh, that pad. I forgot about it because of the bugs. Yep. <laughs> so we walk back to quarters at a normal pace, and I can look <laughs> at the 
So we're going to walk normally. Ty can look at the pad. I'm going to look around frequently. I don't oh, think I'm Ty would remember the back. pad. Okay. I'm not going to check it back. eventually. Okay. I'll get to it before the end of the day. All right. You actually start walking back. You message, uh, you, you chime for Mirgrat, who, again, uh, you all, all have mentioned you have links, so there's that. So you kind of, you know, Mirgrat, we, we got some information to give you. Where are you? Mirgrat, I am escorting soul hunters. Yep. <laughs> and then I'll just give them my location, wherever I happen to be with the soul hunters. Oh, God. I start dragging my feet because I don't want to go anywhere near Soul Hunters. <laughs> but normally I would, like, immediately nope the fuck out. But given how many things I have not noped the fuck out for recently, I just start slowing down instead of running off. Okay. All right. We will go meet them. Uh... Yeah, I put my knife away, but I keep my hand close to it. <laughs> Soul Hunters. Fair enough. Or bugs. I'm not sure which are worse. <laughs> oh, the bugs? I don't know. Having someone steal my soul, having a bug eat my head. I mean, you're going to assure you that you're not, the soul hunters aren't interested in you. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> <laughs> Or they yeah. claim, or they just haven't mentioned it recently. Yeah, I think it's a not now thing, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Ty's so, soul probably isn't that valuable, but you never know. But she's attached <laughs> to it nonetheless. She likes it. It's it's a good thing to have. <laughs> From your grat, you take them. You don't normally go to the promenade, but again, because it's been asked that you guys kind of keep a low profile, so don't take them to the mall. Mirgrat loves them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know. Yep. So, but yes, yeah, so they're kind of humming to themselves, trying to figure out, you know, it's around here somewhere. We can sense. There's, then all of a sudden they stop. They look at each other. They look at Mirgrat. We do not know enough of your kind. Do you sense that? Sense yeah. what? <laughs> when you say that, they kind of nod. This is, Understandable. There is about to be a lot of death on this vessel. And we can sense that. Where is security? I think we need to go there first. I am going to usher them to security all the while talking about how fascinating it is that they can sense impending death. Mm -hmm. And I am going to ask to be able to at some point link with them telepathically to experience this scent. Okay. Uh, I have no idea how soul hunters would experience telepathy or even it would be allowed, but again, we'll deal with that in a bit. They'll actually go, well, you know, for lack of a term, let us discuss that at another time once our first mission is complete. Um, so I'm going to speed it up a little bit. So as Julie and Mir- uh, Julie and Ty talk to Mirgrad, Mirgrad explains that we're headed up to security. Just to make Ty even happier, now she has it's to do... two favorite things, soul hunters and cops. Like I said, there are other options that Ty could be doing right now. Just saying. Uh, yeah, but it would look suspicious if she just took off. Fair enough. So she'll just uh, follow along. Okay, you guys actually meet soul hunters and Mirgrat outside of uh, security, where Kali is there going, Whoa, oh, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what in, you know, what in the name of all that is out there in the vast of the universe, in the name of Jaquan, what is going on here? We are here to report an impending catastrophe! I'm guessing! Uh... <laughs> I, like, kind of stand behind Dooley because I already got arrested by this person once, so I want to avoid I, notice as much as possible. Fair I enough. look at Mirgrat and I say, does it involve bugs? I am unclear as to that. The Soul I Hunters... The Soul Hunters, and I say, does it involve bugs? I'm not familiar with any insects. We could just feel the impending loss. We cannot determine the exact nature. Probably the bugs. 
Go on. And, and tell them of the, the doom that we're all about to face, obviously. <laughs> She's a little hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> they said, we are here primarily for one that must be preserved. And we believe it's in the security office. And, uh, uh, Kelly goes, um, uh, really? Said, yes. We could feel it so close. The stench of almost death is radiant, almost too pungent. Please, I believe you have somebody in your holding cell. He, he literally kind of points in the, in the right direction. Over that way, that we must, we must collect. Kali okay. kind of goes, not any of my team, just that way. Okay, uh, he, she literally turns in. Security to the break room. Let's clear the office for five minutes. And everybody who is wearing a security badge just kind of, you know, out and to the left. You know, <laughs> why <wide laughs> move out? Ali's like, I will stay here. Do you still sense the death from in there? They said, yes. Right. I'm going to stay by the door and take calls. I'm just going to let... You guys do your thing, and I'm gonna just stay out of your way. They said, "Oh, thank you, we're wise." No, I'm a coward. Just do your thing. <laughs> May I observe the process? Uh, they actually say, in this case, because you were kind to us. Yes, it is not something we normally share, but yes, you are allowed. I sincerely so, appreciate the courtesy that you are showing me. You guys. Yeah, is anybody else besides Mirgret going to join the Soul Hunters in the office? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't mind kind of like, you know, standing by the side of the road watching the train wreck that's about to happen. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to hang out in the hallway with the chief of police, so I guess oh, I'm going yeah, I in. I think about that. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> About that. So watch okay. this guy that I got arrested on purpose uh, get harvested by soul hunters. I don't say this out loud because I didn't tell anybody I did this, but it's definitely <laughs> through my head. It's a little awkward. It's okay. I feel so loud about it. It was that loud because I didn't tell anyone I did this. <laughs> I didn't mention this to anybody because I did it for some people that you don't know I work for. But sh- yeah, this is all going through my head for sure. That's a little awkward for me. <laughs> so the three soul hunters come in, and in the cell is is Milgram, who is praying, you know, very much at the Jeet Nimbari prayer. And they literally all three approach the door, and they give the same smell reaction that people do when they enter a bakery. Just that... Ah, yes. He doesn't open his eyes, but he just goes, Are you here to take me home? They say, A home. Yes. They reach over to uh, unlock the door. And oh, unlock the cell, I should say. They said, please, we must preserve you. Immediately, once that happens, he springs into action and with both arms knocks out two of the soul hunters, one with basically flying punch. Literally, one with the left and one with the right. Just springs forward. Bam! Down! Rolls into the uh, in, into the hallway. The third soul hunter is there. He looks over at uh, uh, the third soul hunter, and who is amazed. They're like they, he's going through his uh, robes to look for a, you know to try to grab a tool, and instead he just jabs his foot into its throat, bringing it down for a second. He turns to you three. Uh, turns to you three. Hands in a. Almost, you know, snake-like formation. The traditional Mimbari, I've come to kick your ass uh, stance. Uh, I start backing away immediately. Yeah. Mira puts their hands up. Okay. Dooley? I, I think, I'm not entirely sure, but I think my brain just went on an overload, and I'll probably just be frozen. <laughs> oh, just stand there. 
All right. With my jaw hanging shut, you know, hanging open, just going, ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he just looks over as you guys. He just says, "We have to go home." And bolts past everybody, literally to get around Dooley. He like leaps up, kicks the wall, and ricochets around Dooley, uh, and then takes off running past. Mirgrat starts clapping. <laughs> okay. Uh, the soul hunters are down, even the one with the throat's <laughs> What do you guys do? Uh, stand there like a fucking idiot because what else am I going to do? I'm going to give the gasping soul hunter medical attention because that's kind of my deal. Okay. When you go down to hell, go ahead and make a quick medicine check. Alright. Check the modifier. 34. A natural Wow. That 20 to boot. Hey, hey, hey. So you're like, well, besides the fact you just had a quick and dirty lesson in Soul Hunter anatomy for the basics, you're like, okay, or wait, this, pop, okay, that, okay, good, this, this. You were able to give the necessary aid to the point that he's functional in like a matter of moments. And he just like starts breathing in again. <gasps> thank you. <sighs> thank you. Uh, looks down, the brothers, is like, well, this, they are breathing. They are not. He, he, he literally holds his hand out. They're going to be okay. He says, uh, where, where did it go? Where? Uh, we will find it. We will find it. Uh, uh, let my brothers come to on their own. They will be fine. And I, 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 I must be away. He starts, he, he you know, starts, uh, uh, scrambling out the door. Friends do leave! Kindly accompany the soul hunter! Okay, and I, I guess somebody finally told me w- what to do, so I'm gonna break out of the fog and go running. And then I stop for a moment. And I'm fine, and go continue running. Okay. <laughs> so here's where a little bit of GM fiat kicks in, but I think this is apropos. Right when you say you go after the soul hunters, Julie. Uh, you run after the soul hunter and you could, you're keeping pace. Of all the people so far, you're probably the most physically fit. So you're keeping a pace, you know, trying to keep up with them and see what's going on. Uh, Kali is actually trying to uh, go behind you. Kali has a bit of a limp and there's a little bit of a clang when she ta- when she walks. She's trying to get behind you going, what's going on? What, what the heck's going on? And just running after you. Ty, you have a thought runs through your head like it was placed there and it said, now, is the time. Go to your reward. Now. Um, and your pad pings again. I take out my iPad, or mm-hmm. space iPad, and look at it. Okay. There, there's a birth number, the same birth number is on there. I'm sorry, the yeah, same birth that. number is what? Same birth number as last time. Uh... Please explain when last time was. I oh, oh, sorry. Uh, in other words, when you got the pad earlier this episode, you when you when you got a ping, it gave you a birth number. So the same number appeared oh, right, last yeah, time yeah. as this time. So okay, uh, yeah. But it's like you know, now is the time. Now I start like shifting towards the door. Okay, slowly. So Mirgrat, uh, make a quick telepathy. Actually, a will save. I think this is the best way the will save. Okay. 16. Okay. You could feel the desperation in the message, but it's like one last burst of energy. Like somebody yelling out something before they fall asleep or die or something else like that. But it's not words so much as the vision of the door. You know exactly where it is. And you know exactly who the people who need to be talked to are. And it's the you know, feeling of go, go there. All right, uh, so I am going to turn to Ty. You turn to Ty. Ty is like, gone. Stop. Oh, am I gone? Oh, good. Yeah. I was well, just so going to stop and like think of a stupid excuse, but go sorry. for it. Go for it. I'll let, I'll let the, I think that's good for it. Yeah. Do so you turn to Ty? Ty. Okay. Mm-hmm. Stop. Moving. Friends, Ty. I require Amber immediately. Um. 
I need to use the restroom before we do that emergency. <laughs> <laughs> I need Amber immediately. Yeah, I need to pee immediately. We'll be right back. Uh, <laughs> I start like moving away again. Okay. Or do you? Or do you decide to pass her uh, the, your your last uh, 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 cube of Amber? Nope. Nope. Okay. So all right. I am going to. Are are the two soul hunters still unconscious? Yes, they are. All right. Uh, I am going to tell security to have them transported to my lab. Okay. Which I'm assuming they'll want to do because no one wants to have two passed out soul hunters hanging out. <laughs> and then I am going to hustle to my lab because I believe we discussed that there is some amber still there. There is indeed. Um, yeah, so, I did not actually use the bathroom. I'm going to go to the birth number. <laughs> okay. To clarify. No problem. So let's start with Ty. So you feel the overwhelmingness of that urge. Go to the birth number now. When you get there, it's like a, yeah, it's a, it's a normal like, uh, uh, hotel room kind of area. Um, you get there and when you do, the code key for the door pops up on your pad. I go on inside. You tap the code key. So where's it going to happen? Door opens. I mean, uh, bug. That's the worst that could happen. That, nope. that already happened, though, so yep. bugs part two. Mm. Oh, you open the door? Mom? Is that you? Your son like, is, is in this room. Oh, shit. Hey, buddy. Uh, what are you doing here? Hey. Uh, well, Auntie got a ticket and put me on here. Uh, she got paid a lot of money. To, to, to put me on here and I was told to stay here. I mean, they, they gave me my food and, and, and there's plenty on the, on the, on the recept, on the system and, and, and I, 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 I guess I'm supposed to be here for some reason. The ticket your, actually your, came in an old envelope too. Does your father know you're here? Um, I, I don't know. He's the one who got another letter. A uh, really old one too. I'm going to kill addressed, that man. It's addressed to him. It had a whole bunch of money in it. That's all I know. And then he put me on this on a shuttle that got me to this vessel, and here I am. Surprise! I'm going to kill that man. <laughs> so, yes, you are probably tearfully re- uh, 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 tearfully reunited with your son. Yes. Um, we're going to cut there for the moment, but it's going to come back in a few moments. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> near Grat, you make your way quickly to your, to your uh, workshop. You arrange again for the security to take the soul hunters there. And they're like, you want them to put in a berth? Fine. Just out of the way. We're going to cover them when we transport them, though. Hope you don't mind. And they're like, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so you head down to the berth. You grab uh, one of your last pieces of amber, and what? And do you take it, or do you? What do you do with it? I I, I take it. Okay. <laughs> so you just throw the whole thing in your mouth, and shoot, you know, chomp away at it, and almost immediately that connection back to the entity is in full force. And it, you know, you could feel it, you could see it, you could hear it, you could actually hear it this time, as it kind of, you know, in strange words and languages, says, The message has been received. We have another messenger. You must collect the message from them, and then all will be resolved. Go now. All right. I'm going to do my... Uh, can I try to wake up the other two soul hunters? Uh, Go ahead and give me a medicine check. I know that's oh, okay. Right. 28. All right. So using some basic uh first aid skills, you're able to, to rouse them. They weren't in any, you know, big thing. They just had, a, you know, again, they got whacked really bad, but otherwise they're okay. They wake up and they said, yes, wow. these are strange accommodations, but... We are here. 
did, were we successful? What happened? And the other one goes, no, no, I still smell it. In fact, I smell it everywhere. What is going on? I am definitely communing with an SG from Beyond the Stars. We need to go now. Uh, very well. We will follow you. Um, if our, if they look over. Our brother, I think our brother is on the hunt. We will deal with this other one because I think it's important. Yes, yes, you're right. I think it's important. They look to you. We will follow you, but please be quick. I'm, so, I'm just gonna like hustle them out to the corridor and, and get us going. Okay. So you get to the corridor, you head down to steerage. You head down to the door where the couple, uh, a gentleman with red hair, uh, sorry, a gentleman with black hair, a woman with red hair, in black outfits with a briefcase, are standing. And you recognize them from the shuttle. The same damn shuttle. The soul hunters also recognize them and they say, they look at them and they pause for a second, your kind is dead. What are you doing here? They, they actually said, our kind is not dead. We have formed a new association. We are no longer... We are no longer subsidiaries. They kind of nod a little bit. But why are you here? They, they look over and say, there is something that requires our attention. The old ones, that which is left the last, need our attention. And one of the other ones goes, wait, do you feel that? The other one goes, yes, it's true. And they turn to the to the couple and says, I believe you have assistance. And then they turn to Mirgrat, can, can you help us, please? Yes, you need help. They both point on the, to the door. I believe I can be of assistance. Please allow me to commune with the entity that I am currently being possessed by. <laughs> so you close your eyes. I need a telepathy check. <laughs> Okay, that's the sentence you don't expect people to say. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> that's so normal. Listen, Mina is very straightforward about their work. Eight. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, it's a muddle mess. You can't quite make anything out, but you can tell these things. One. The couple in front of you have some form of telepathy, but it is ancient and almost artificial. Two, the soul hunters also have a form of telepathy, but it's almost primeval, for lack of a better term. And they both have the same, for lack of a better term, color of aura. Third, there is something on the other side of that door that your entity desperately wants. Fascinating. All right, I'm going to knock on the door. Okay. You knock on the door. Joey opens it. Hey, Akmara, what the hell? He looks over. Oh, it's you. How you doing, sir? Ma'am? And what the... F he just blurs out obscenities when seeing the Soul Hunters. What, well, what's going on? What's going on? I am here with the Soul Hunters. We are requesting entry through this door. <laughs> Joey actually goes... All right. I knew this had to happen one day or the other. He turns, Boss, I think they finally come. You hear another voice. Have they finally come for me? Very well. I have, it is all arranged. Joey kind of says, all right, I'm on in. You open, you enter the office, the outer office, and again, it feels like an actual office. You know, there's people on desks and things like that. They're doing both counting change, but also stacks of amber everywhere. Not like giant stacks, just kind of like piles. And, the other, the soul hunters go, he is the last of his kind. Yes, he must be preserved. The door opens for where the boss is, and out walks the boss in a very nice suit, but it's not a earth suit or anything else like that. It's a kind of a robe structure as a Markab. Opens oh, the okay. Uh, opens the door and he says, I suppose this had to happen eventually. <sighs> he kind of opens his arms, if you must. I mean, soul hunters don't actually kill people, they just wait for them to die. Pretty much. Uh, they will get close, but they won't actually kill them. They'll wait for them to, you know, suffer whatever. Um, 
So at that, I think Mirrorath's gonna go, as you are not currently dead, I want the questions! <laughs> Very well. Uh, please, uh, Joey, tea, please. He, uh, he, uh, he then ushers you guys into the back office, which is elegantly appointed. So many archaic antiques, old tech, stuff everywhere. Books upon books upon scrolls upon scrolls. Everything. And he says, please, everybody, sit. He, uh, the couple, the soul hunters, and Mirgrat all sit. And he says, I will answer your questions. And he sits down behind a desk, a very lovely desk, I should imagine. He says, and the, the uh, couple, I just, one of them goes, ah, I see. So this is where all the tech has been going. I said, yes, we thank you for your assistance in that regard. Please tell the association that I understand and I have kept by the agreements. They nod and says, the association is thankful. Thank you. He says, he nods. And to the soul hunters, please just, I don't know when it's going to happen or how it's going to happen, but please. And whatever you, whatever you need to do, do. In the meantime, please enjoy my hospitality. And they sigh and they say, Thank you. You so rarely get such a, 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 such politeness from any entity. Marrakech says, when your entire species is dead, it doesn't matter anymore. So they, they say thank you, and they actually accept the tea from Joey, and they drink it politely. And he looks, and the Marcab looks to the Pakmara, says, yes, I am the last of my kind. I was once known as, uh, Gerard. But that doesn't matter anymore. How can I help you, librarian? I am currently communing with the entity for which the Amber is a conduit. I would like to know everything about this situation. Very well. The quick version is that while my people are all very religious and we all keep spiritually pure, I felt an urge long ago to go someplace else to find different sort of meaning. And I found... He uh, waves over at the association. I found their old masters. And they showed me things. They showed me knowledge. And I devoted myself to such knowledge. It was while I was at one of their centers of learning that my people died. All of them. Or at least enough that we're basically a dead race. I kept looking for a way to preserve our culture, our species, or something. Find a way. The masters pointed out the, the rock seeds and mentioned that the rock seeds were modified eons ago for a different purpose. I modified them again and using, he pulls out a, a large tome of, uh, with a strange archaic writing all over it. The information I found here, and I created the ember in the hopes that what could be brought forth from the ember could be used to save my species, what was left of it. While that's going on, tie for a quick second. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're having your, your soulful reunion with your child, you actually like, you talk to him for a few, a few minutes, make sure he's okay. He tells you about the strangeness around him, but otherwise he's like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm okay. But there's another chime at the door. Do you answer it? Um, I go check the pad thing again to see who it is. <laughs> it's Alan Gibbons again. I answer it. What the hell? Okay. So, Alan comes in. He says, you have taken care of one of the problems for us. And I just want to come by and say thank you. And we, you also notice that there's about a dozen or so other humans behind him that are all wearing, they're wearing blue pendants, but not like his blue pendant. And they all look somewhat little odd. Want to make sure that our agreement has been kept. You have made sure that we can progress in what we do. You have been given a large amount of money, plus a bonus, and you've been reunited mm -hmm. with your child. The last part of your agreement is that when this was done, you were out. 
I just want to make That's sure right. that we abide by our, our agreement. He uh, yes. holds out his hand hand for a second, and he holds out another one to, to your child. This will seal the seal the deal, and we will consider our business concluded. Mm, I look extremely suspicious, but I do I take his hand because what else am I going to do? <laughs> okay. So you take his hand, he offers it to to your son, who takes his hand. His pendant flares, just glows, and you feel the radiance around you. And for a moment, you don't feel like yourself anymore. And then you open your three eyes, and (laughs) you move your arm with the claw and the other one with the bugler for a second. And kind of stretch like you've been in a strange dream. And your son is there also. His uh, pyramidical body stretching in the pseudo foot coming out to try to motivate himself to get closer to the door. It, you can tell that he's having so many problems with his ventricles because he's just not used to it the way you are. And then you remember your dream. Of being a Rikari. No, you are a Rikari. Your son is a Rikari. And now you're not. And you're not on the ship. You're not anywhere. You look out the window for a second and you see primordial suns outside. And a whole host of of, of, uh, things that look exactly like you do all with that small blue crystal around their necks. You are out of the game, but you're not out of this game. And I'm leaving that as your season finale for you, but don't worry, I've got something for that later on. So, (laughs) while that's happening... All right. Cool, cool. Damn! I you're guess asking, I'm a you, you asked thing. It to, that at the end you wanted to be out, so you are. You're out of your body, yep. and you're in a new one. But you're with your cool. son. Um, you are also <laughs> as... So many questions. What? Mirgorod is going to have so many questions. <laughs> uh, but let's go to Dooley. So Dooley is running after the last soul hunter, who is running after Milgram. Um, who is running... Up to the bridge. Um, so you pass security agents, security guards, everything, and he just, you know, tears that door open. And again, you've seen Babylon 5. They wander onto CNC all the time. So he just kind of runs in. The soul hunter is not far behind. And as you leave, you were right behind the soul hunter. Kali, not far behind you. Uh, Captain Storenko looks over and immediately screams, what is the meaning of this? Uh, the soul hunter looks at him in the eyes and says, I'm here to do a job. Uh, Dooley, you come in and see all this Milker looking around kind of frantically. What do you do? I just... Business of the Pock Rod Diplomacy! <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, speak closer to your You're kind of faint. I said, it's the business of the Pachmar of Diplomacy, and I go to the Soul Hunter. <laughs> yeah. Alright, sorry. Alright, so yeah, I, I just yelled, business of the Pachmar of Diplomacy, which, you know, I know are not the right words, but I'm not thinking really at the fate. moment. And uh, I go stand okay? kind of by the yes. Soul Hunter, but hopefully not Dead. close enough. Okay, to... um, let me check my settings. I don't Maybe know. I stand close changed. to it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh... While trying not to stand close to it. <laughs> In a small yes. cutaway, I will show... It's like uh, the, the headset volume has been set low. Uh, uh, um, Panini, Roglio, talking so to Madame help? Vidrasini. Is that any louder? And Madame Vidrasini now so throwing out a couple of cards. Yeah, and your eyes too. light up like, You're not quite as, as resonant as you were earlier, but like you're still going through it all, right? You're lost. Yeah. No, I haven't Cutting back to you guys, anything, so there is... I no, I'm all in panting. Okay, I'll probably have to tweak it to make your sound a little bit louder. But compared I to the other two people, you're like faint to me. Go so I just want to double check. Home. That is strange. I did boost 
the die settings a little bit, but the, I don't think I uh, can navigation really panel. boost it all the way up and see what Punches happens. out okay. the Captain Navigator as high as it will go. And swipes his hand across uh, for the, input uh, volume. the navcom system. And immediately okay. just I don't know what just in a ton of numbers. Like, whatever. Everyone right. feels the Celestia pulling to the left away from the beacon. It immediately, he again punches in some more numbers as people try to run off, run up to, to grab him and he just clobbers them away. Um, he hits a few more p- panels and the afterburner inches kick in. Everyone feels the Celestia lurch and you know, fall oh farther away from uh, the beacon. This is a terrible thing because most people consider this being lost at sea more than anything else. And with the last, you know, as people are trying to struggle with him, he literally kicks the hype, uh, the uh, uh, jump engines online. Okay. So, oh. Dooley, yeah. you have a chance to act now. What are you going to do? Um, can I? Tackle him away from the controls? You can try. I'm going to need an attack roll. Uh, let me look and see. The grapple me. check, but yeah. I'm not even trying to hold on to him. I'm just trying to push him out of the way. Okay. But yeah, the attack roll is... I'm guessing that's a close combat roll. Correct. I have zero strength, so... uh <laughs> <laughs> so it's your base no, attack? I, I, yeah, base, uh, it's, uh, I'm just looking at the first page and it looks like it's a, the attack bonuses, there's close combat, personal range, space combat, blah, blah, blah. So it's close combat, so. Correct. <laughs> See? Not good. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry, I was waiting for my screen. What'd you roll? I roll, I rolled a one. I got oh! three. Oh, I will get back to that because that's beautiful drama right there. But let's go back to Mirgret. Mirgret had a couple of questions for uh, uh, the Marcab. Yes. Okay. Go uh, ahead. After, after it is explained to me what the whole deal with the Amber is, mm-hmm. uh, my next question is not really a question, actually. There is something in here that the entity that is currently possessing me is desperately in search of. Would you mind if I allow it to look around? He says, if you must. So you let the entity basically possess you and control itself, control you for a minute? Yeah, I mean, like, I assume it, it, it's like, <laughs> like, it's, I'm gonna let it have the driver's seat, but I assume I get to still, like, see what's going on. Oh, yeah, you'll still be able to hear and see everything, but it's going to have full control, essentially. Yeah, I'll give it the front seat for a little bit. Okay. So, you, you can feel it kind of, like, wash over you, and you just kind of, like, you've probably either had a fever or been intoxicated enough that you have that incidence where you don't feel like you're in your body, you're just kind of, like, five inches behind it. I feel like I would have experienced something similar to this while using telepathy at some point. Probably. But I, this is something that a lot of people I know when they get in a certain in mindset or exhausted, they sometimes feel like they're not like fully seated in their body. And this is what you feel for you. It's like you're you're seeing and you're hearing everything, but you're kind of five inches behind you. Um, just that feeling of not being fully seated in your body. So when that happens, you know, your Pakura self reaches up. <sighs> and in the squeaky voice goes, you have helped us all immensely in everything that we have done. And we thank you for pro- propagating us so that we may survive the journey from beyond. And in your regards, we will help continue your way of things. However, since you want a way to keep uh, your race uh, continuing, and we have a way of preserving it through the Pakmara method that I have come to understand. I believe we have a, have a way of doing this. He says, you have? Indeed! It grabs um, a, a handful of amber, shoves it down the Markhab's throat for a second, and his eyes get really, really wide, and it says, almost, but not quite. This will help preserve everything. And you watch your hand 
drive itself inside the gut of this barcap, tear out the stomach, and devour it, amber and all. I feel that I may have not done such a great job imparting the finer points of Pogmara theology to this entity. (laughs) (laughs) It then grabs one of the scrolls and the book and starts tearing the pages out and devouring the pages. The Soul Hunter, I'll go, ah, yes, they pull out this device that kind of looks like an old-fashioned ray gun from somewhere, except highly more complicated, and they pull out a sphere, put it behind it, put it behind it, and immediately draw out the essence of the Marcap, whose image is reflected for a moment, his face is reflected in the sphere, and they said, you will be preserved. We swear it. Please, come. They go, they put, uh, put itself in the, uh, it puts the soul in their satchel, and they walk out. The, the two others with you, uh, look kind of been horrified. You turn to the the couple who are bathing. I don't turn to anyone. The, the what's its name is in the driver's seat, baby. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you can see them bathed in shadow, and it looks over and says, "Your time is done. We will gather our forces again, and we will play amongst the stars again." If you want to be our plaything, say it now, and we will adapt you. Otherwise, go and know that our joy is coming. They stand up. They say they will be notified, and they will become playthings. Goodbye. They immediately leave. Not even slowly, not brisk, not like running, but briskly leave. You, in the meantime, look around and you see all these tones and everything else like that. You kind of kick the body of the Marcab out of the way and immediately start opening books and books and books and literally finding pages and devouring it. And as you devour, you can feel the other absorbing the knowledge. And that's where we're going to leave your season finale situation. Hell yeah. <laughs> yes. So as I try to tackle this guy and I go flying across the bridge. <laughs> oh, oh, nothing that simple. With a one, people have got his arms, his legs, he can't quite kick the 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 the, the hyperspace button. Okay. The, the, the the jump point button. He's like, come on, I have to go home! I have to go home! You rush it going, come on, let me get, let me take care of this. And in a move that you would not see coming, he hooks his leg around your neck, pivots with his hips, and chucks you at the control panel. Your head <laughs> hits the height, the jump gate button. The oh, jump wow. gate uh, point forms and the ship Exits. There is three planets that you see as you come out. They have rings. The rings are joined, interestingly enough, which is not something that should be happening on a gravimetric level, but here they are. And suddenly everyone sees this. They drop uh, Milgram, who looks over and says, Home. I'm home. I'm, and light shines out of him, spews through the window, and then dissipates. Milgram looks over. Wait! Wait! Where did you go? And starts pounding on the view screen, and they're like dragging his ass out. And that leaves you staring with the bridge crew, and Kali, the captain, at this new planet. And the word hanging in the air is, where are we? Yeah, where are we? Camera pans <laughs> back. Camera shows the, the, uh, uh, Celestia in a new system of worlds far away. 
ex Orlon Collins. That is our season finale. I finally got you guys there. Uh, <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, it looks like our team is in a right jam out yonder on the edge of space. Adventure, excitement, oh, horrors from beyond the stars. This is all coming in season two. I'm Adriadne, and I hope to see you there. Uh oh, here he comes again. Uh, where did I leave my body? Uh, oh, why do my sides hurt? Uh, so is it time to record yet? And that's where we're in for this week. I want to thank everyone for joining us and hope that you continue to join us every two weeks for another episode of Odyssey. If you have any questions, comments, constructive criticisms, or just want to say hi then you can find us at temporalplaygrounds.com slash odyssey or email us at temporalplaygrounds at gmail.com or now you can follow us on Twitter at odysseyb5dm. Babylon 5 was created by J. Michael Straczynski and is owned by Warner Brothers Domestic Media. The Babylon 5 role-playing game was produced by Mongoose Publishing utilizing the OGL gaming license for D20. Our sound editor was Marley Gerber. Our theme music was composed by Evan King. The song Titan Striker is available on YouTube and at evankingmusic.com. Incidental music provided by Tabletop Audio at tabletopaudio.com. Please see websites for more information. Once again, I am Daniel, and I thank you for joining us on this grand adventure. Good night, and keep dreaming.